Oh, probably they go back to before he was three years old. He just had to tell him bedtime stories of racing and wanting to go out to the barn and stand out there with it cold and in his diapers and just waiting by the door. Want me to just pull the door up so he could just sit on a motorcycle. Racing a little bit past three, and uh, but we started practicing certain things at about two. That's about where it started back then. That to me was his work habits. I mean, since a little kid, first one to track, last one to leave, and just couldn't keep him off. I'm talking about on practice tracks, just at home, and the training and the work habits, and it's just world champions is something different about it. Say born in him, but you just got to work at it, and he's worked hard all his life, so. I know when we was young, I would tell him stories about Wayne Rainey, Freddie Spencer, and King Kenny, and I'd always tell the story, and if he didn't win the race, I'd have to tell it all over again. And so, at that age, I mean, he was already starting to talk about world champion himself, not me telling him. He started thinking about world champion at an early age, by the time he started school, first grade. People told me the odds was probably 10 million to one, and so we knew it wasn't gonna be easy. But that was always his goal, uh, was to be world champion. This is where it all began. I grew up in Owensboro, Kentucky, and it's very important for me. I mean, it's where I, where I come from. You know, we all have to come from somewhere, and this is home for me. Home, but also this field right here is where I learned to ride. When we were younger, uh, we had a little, we had tracks in here, and there was also horses in here. I remember sometimes having to dodge a few horses, but uh, I think this is where I developed my love for the motorcycle and my passion for the sport. I don't miss Kentucky, Owensboro, and always will be. I guess it's because my family more than anything. I mean, I love the area and my friends, but I love coming home to my family and now probably even more with more nieces and nephews coming. Yeah, there have been plenty of battles have uh, went down right here, uh, especially as kids growing up. Luckily for me, I had one older brother that I was trying to chase and I had one younger brother I was trying to run from. So was a perfect situation for me. Racing in our family is, is, is just part of life around here, you know? I mean, it really is. It's what we grew up doing. It's what we know. We all race. Even my mother raced, my sister. Uh, you'll probably see she's got some trophies in there from her amateur days. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just what we know, what we do. I think it was, was let's conquer America before we go uh, try to conquer the world. Soon as we knew that it looked like you're going to be the AMA champion. And then he started talking to, about going to the world championship and to MotoGP and then Honda in 2006, he got to achieve his goal. So that was all, it's all good. I see in his interviews, he said my family was there, all three of my sons. When they win races and stuff, if we're there, he's, they always say, and the most important thing, my family was here. I did try to believe there's another life after racing and let's keep it family. And he's been really good about that and took good care of us. You can't look back much you could have, should have. I was, in my mind, I was kind of thinking maybe a couple years quicker. Uh, than he did, but I knew he wasn't happy racing for 15th and be the first in uh, some other class in there. I mean, nobody's ever won World Superbike Championship and the MotoGP World Championship, and then he gets to throw in AMA 
Superbike Championship, so could be a little while before anybody ever does that. So I really supported that because I know how much he wanted to win at MotoGP. You know what I mean? You got to have one of them four rides factory team, and where now he's on a good factory Honda team, and he wants to win World Superbike Championship. And he knew this year it was going to be tough. World Superbike Championship said make 10 guys. And you don't see that no more in MotoGP. When I first went in, we did a little bit. So I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Probably just being the hard worker, the family guy, family that he is, and also that he don't never forget where he comes from. He comes back. He's still humble. And uh, uh, that means as much as I, it just being a good kid, that means more to me than you just said, hey, world champion. And so that kind of makes me the most proud. His work habits. I've never seen many in my life. I read a few books about some of them guys that were world champions, most of them that had those work habits was world champion. And he never took no shortcuts. Never. To me, he hadn't changed hardly any. Still likes to come to his hometown. He don't want no special treatment. He hadn't changed any. It didn't go to his head for sure. And he didn't change any with his family. I get that question a lot, what your first memory with the bike is. And I really don't remember because I don't remember life before bikes. I mean, from the time I literally could crawl. I was around the motorcycle. My, my dad raced, even my mom raced, because my dad's story goes, he wanted to find, uh, he needed a fast girl to make, uh, he wanted to make fast babies. So, uh, you know, my mom and dad both raced, my older brother was racing, and from the time literally I could crawl, I was already with the bike. As a kid, I had a, just a big desire. I mean, it's all I ever wanted. I never said, oh, when I get older, I would like to be an astronaut, or I want to be the president, or have these crazy dreams. As a kid, I wanted to be a GP racer. I started in dirt track. That's what my father knew best, and we started with dirt track. But the thing was, at that time in America, there wasn't a lot of opportunities for dirt track riders. And I loved dirt track, but immediately I liked road racing even more because it was, uh, the tracks were longer, there was more variables with uphill, downhill, right-hand corners. So uh, I love this about road racing, and immediately I like the speed, and uh, I went with it, and it's been a good move for me. My jump to MotoGP was huge. And if I'm completely honest, the step was bigger than I thought it was going to be. Not only did I have to learn the, the bike and the, the, the new team uh, and the racing, I had to learn the whole culture, the whole travel. And uh, it was a deep water and was not easy in the beginning, but I was able to learn to swim just quick enough to, to stay on. Lagoon of 2005 was like a dream for me because uh, everything worked perfect and, and in racing it don't, it don't always go like a dream. You know, during the race when I'm leading a MotoGP race when I should be only focused and my mind was, it was so relaxed I was looking to see who was in second, third place, who else was doing what and uh, I got the pole position, I think I got the fastest lap, win the race national anthem, a ride with my dad, and uh, was uh, just a fairy tale. Nicky Hayden has won the American Grand Prix here at Laguna Seca. What a performance and what a day for Nicky Hayden. My childhood memories, my life has pretty much uh, been around motorcycles. Of course, I've got other hobbies, went to school and did things, but I, I wouldn't say this is all oh, racing bikes is just a job. I mean, it's more than that. It's my passion, and it, it's who I am. I'm a bike racer, so, uh, of course, everyone in our family, I mean, if you go around our house, I mean, you go in the garage, there's bikes. You go in the 
living room, there's trophies, pictures. I think all of our memories are from uh, our childhood days. And uh, I got some cousins that race too, that have, uh, you know, racing in the AMA now. So it's, uh, it's great to have the family support. And uh, it's uh, certainly been a good ride. It's been good to our family. And we're just, uh, you know, really passionate about the motorcycle. Well, for sure, in Portugal, that moment in the gravel trap, you know, I thought the thought of being world champion, I just slipped through my hands. But I gathered myself up, and an hour after that race, I never, I always believed I was still going to be world champion. And, uh, you know, going to the last race, I think 11 points down on what, arguably the greatest rider of all time, with all the momentum on his side, an injured shoulder, I remember us coming out of the last corner in Valencia and realizing uh, my dream of being world champion at the highest level was uh, coming true, and that was uh, very, very special. Ladies and gentlemen, salute the 2006 MotoGP world champion. It's the American, Nicky Hayden. You know, I still, I think, when they let off the ye yellow fireworks, I laugh. And I see the pictures because uh, I like, I guess, being the underdog. I have a ton of respect for Valentino Rossi, as we know. I mean, he's the GOAT. And uh, to be able to beat him certainly made it extra special. I would say that moment for me was what I lived all my life for. And, and not just me. It wasn't like a go. I felt like I won. I felt like my family won it, like we won it together because my parents and my sisters and my brothers, uh, they sacrificed so much to give us this opportunity at a young age. And uh, yeah, I felt like uh, we, we won it. To watch somebody to get to their dreams, that's pretty, that's pretty good. I think everybody wants to see their kid do that. Racing motorcycles is not, I mean, it's just a way of life for me. I mean, my family does it, my friends do it, and it's just, uh, it really is more than just a job or just a passion. It's uh, bikes are a way of life for me.